Yeah, former Royal Marine who was charged last week with spying uh, for China. Well, uh, Hong Kong to be precise, but that's now part of China, uh, along with two other men. Uh, has been found dead on a park bench near his home in Maidenhead in Berkshire. On Sunday at 5.15, he was found by a member of the public, and when the police turned up, he was pronounced dead at the scene. Uh, now, uh, the other two still face these charges, so we can't go into too many details for legal reasons, but I thought I'd get an expert on uh, to tell us exactly what this case is all about. Obviously, the implication is uh, uh, that uh, the Royal Marine, uh, shall we say, was in a state of some distress. Uh, but we mustn't go there because we don't know exactly what's happening. But let's talk to a uh, professor of cyber security, Kevin Curran. Uh, thank you for joining us, Kevin. Good evening, Kevin. Yeah, if you could just, uh, I mean, I say we can't go into too many details. Very sad uh, death of this guy, Matthew Trickett. He was 37. He was uh, uh, a Home Office Immigration Enforcement Officer and alongside uh, two other colleagues, I think they were Border Force Officers, uh, Ch uh, Chai Luing Wei, uh, he was 38 from Staines in Surrey, and Chung Bu Yen from Dalston in East London. All three of them are charged, so for their sake we have to be careful. Uh, but uh, just tell us what this case is all about, if you could, Kevin. Yes, three men have been arrested under the National Security Act um, with assisting in the Hong Kong Intelligence um, Service and Foreign Interference. And again, that they've been accused of espionage, really, providing information back to the Hong Kong authorities um, and have been carried it out since December of 2023 and May the 1st, um, you know, of this of this year, really. So the due up in court, well, the word due up in court for the 24th, which is in three days time. And of course, the National Security Act came into play last year in July, actually. And this is one of the first cases where we're seeing someone in a high profile you know, where they've tightened up the laws and the National Security Act, you know, what we have, we've always had the official Espionage Act as well, which generally applies to public officials. But now this applies to anyone who can be seen as, as aiding and abetting a foreign intelligence service. Is this uh, this new offence? I mean, would in the past this have come under the auspices of treason? Um, exactly. Uh, but, but again, what, what, you know, what, what we're seeing here again is with, with the National Security Act again, which is generally brought in for our Eastern rivalries, you know, mm -hmm. um, tightens up a lot of things again to do with sabotage and, of course, access and sites and mm -hmm. brings it out into the public domain more so again, because people, especially now in the technological age, you know, people have access to a lot of systems who previously would have been, you know, behind uh, MOD firewalls and whatever else. And mm -hmm. Um, in place again, but only have access to documents and cabinets again. But we, we're seeing a lot of um, a lot of documents can leak, which are very sensitive to governments again. And so the government brought in the National Security Act to cover this. As a professor of cyber security, does Britain have a problem with cyber security? Um, it's very difficult to protect all our systems, especially with Again, where we see China and Russia, of course, being the two um, countries which do the most active hacking against us. When you have a country like China with so many people again, and that they've dedicated so many people in again to to their technical side again, because again, it's easier now to cause destruction in a foreign country, you know, just through attacking the, the computer systems as well and the infrastructure and critical infrastructure as well. and. Of course, it can be difficult to estimate how many people work for state-sponsored hacking groups because, of course, um, with traditional military means, we can count the number of feet on the ground and the tanks and the planes and whatever else. But when it comes to something technical like hacking, again, it's very hard. But we have a good idea about We, we know about the main threat groups, as we say, these advanced, and persi advanced persistent threat groups again. Um, like APT-1 and APT-41. Right. And again, so we, we know for sure that there's probably upwards of about 100,000 Chinese hackers who, from morning until night, that their, you know, that their mission is to infiltrate West, Western systems. Uh, and I, as I in no way uh, want to uh, 
uh, draw these three uh, accused into this discussion uh, because we don't know the details of that. But the Port Matthew Trickett, who is no longer with us, Chung Bien Yuan and Chi Dueng Wai are all, of course, uh, innocent until uh, they may be proved guilty, they may not be. So I'm not talking about them. But in terms of, you're talking about hacking cybersecurity. Now, in the old days, you know, spying was done. Uh, the, you know, Chinese agents would approach British agents and British officials and try and corrupt them and get information from them. Is that kind of process where China, uh, re, you know, wants to find people who might help them, has that been made much easier by uh, the internet, by social media? You know, in other words, all these men meeting in dark alleys uh, no longer have to do it. They can do it electronically. Is that sort of syndrome on the rise? Absolutely. They've got dedicated teams for social media again. So there's nationalities I wouldn't touch um, if they approach me on social media because I'm just too suspicious about it. That, of course, they have. It's an easy way. It's the, oh, it's the new honeypots again that so many men especially fall for it again. Yeah, uh, so, of course, a lot of social media activity uh, that they concentrate a lot on social media activity to try to fool people, to try to, you know, what for, you know, anything again, because it is so easy. Again, you know, men can be very foolish uh, again. Yeah, I know, I know that, uh, Kevin. <laughs> uh, I'm well aware of that. Uh, listen, Kevin, uh, it's a bit difficult conversation, but uh, very good to have it with you. Thank you very much for your time. Kevin Curran, the excellent professor of cybersecurity there, after the sad death of Matthew Trickett, who, along with two other men, was charged uh, with uh, assisting of spying uh, for Hong Kong, uh, in other words, China. And this is a rising problem.